Hey guys, Ryan here. Thank you for joining me for another video. In this one, I want to tell you about one of my favorite Amazon FBA tools. Honestly, this is one I couldn't live without. Now, specifically what this one does is it helps with accounting. I mean, this is one of those things that I think a lot of sellers overlook. They just assume like, hey, I'm making sales. I must be making money. And at the end of the year, they're like, wait a second, why is my bank account lower than it used to be? So with this tool, I'm going to show you it helps you understand your true bottom line, which is incredibly important for any business, let alone an Amazon business. Um, like I said, I couldn't live without this tool because every Amazon sale that I feel like comes through the platform, it's got variables. You know, like the Amazon fee that they take, it's based on what you sell a product at. Now, a lot of you guys probably know that this is, it's not uncommon to change the price point of your products. Also, things like advertising fees, you know, those factor in on a per sale basis and uh, this software will take how much you spent on advertising and factor that into the sale. Now, it also helps with one other thing. It helps me track my inventory levels so that I know when it's time for me to reorder. So it's, it's very versatile. It's made by the people who brought us Jungle Scout and I'm gonna show you exactly how I use it and why it's one of my favorite tools. So let me go jump on my computer and we'll get started. All right, this is part 11 of my Amazon FBA 2020 and beyond mini series. So in this one, I'm gonna show you how I track my profitability of my Amazon business across the board and how I track my inventory levels so that I avoid running out of stock by reordering inventory, not over ordering, right? Knowing not only when, but how much to order based on my recent sales. Real quick, before I dive into things, for the new viewers, let me introduce myself. I'm Ryan Hoag. I've sold over $1.7 million on Amazon. I need to update that. If you want to follow the links in the description, I've got an Amazon FBA Facebook community open to the public. Lots of great discussion. I'd love to have you there. Also, I have a seven-day mini course that'll get you started with selling on Amazon, selling your own private label FBA products. I help you with product research. It's free to join, delivered via email if you want to sign up. Also, I publish transparent monthly income reports. You can follow my journey as an FBA seller. You can actually go back in time to the start when I only sold five products in a month or you know, follow to where I made almost 3,000 sales in a month. And I'm actively posting a new one every single month on the first or second day. So if you subscribe to my channel or join my email list, I'll let you know. And last but not least, I wrote a full Amazon FBA course. I'm constantly adding to it. It's been very popular lately. I call it the most thorough course on the internet. Even though I don't charge thousands of dollars for it, it is the most thorough course on the internet. And I teach you not only how to do product research, but how to validate products. So this course, it should be set apart from the like average course that doesn't teach you how to like validate the financials of a product before spending money on it so um very important stuff and you can find a lot more than that in the course if you want to check it out link in the description if you have any questions you can always reach out to me by the way as well all right so i'm going to be talking about how to track profit and project inventory levels with the help of our buddies at jungle scout uh, they call this the sales analytics tool it used to be called fetcher and the one that i use is still called fetcher however they basically got i think two tools doing the exact same thing under the probably the same subscription model. Um, so I use the old one. I'm going to show you the new one since I don't know if you can even sign up for the old one anymore. I think they're probably going to transition me over at some point. But this is what it looks like when you log in. So I'm using their demo account. They very graciously let me use it. And uh, I'm going to use um, some of their data just to show you around. So this is the dashboard. Uh, the thing that you're probably most interested in is number one, the date range, which is um, in the top right corner here above me all the way up there. And when you set that date range, like when I do my monthly income reports, I set that to the last month. Then I look at things like how many units did I sell? How much revenue did I generate after fees are subtracted and costs and all that stuff? Like what was my profit? You know, all those things that are extremely important to know. So let me break down how I use this tool. So the first section, and this is according to the navigation bar, which is that screenshot of the black sales analytics thing that you see there. It's called profit overview. All right. And this is on the dashboard, actually. So if you click net profit, you see essentially how this number is generated. Revenue over the period of time you specify minus cost of goods sold, which, by the way, that lumps together a lot of things. I'm going to break them down for you in this video. Uh, and that gives you your gross profit over that period of time. And when you then subtract operating expenses, because, yes, there's lots of hidden fees everywhere, uh, you get your net profit. Next tab over, revenue. So how many sales came through Amazon? Uh, deduct refunds from that because no matter how awesome your product is, 
it's Amazon, guys. Come on. I know a lot of you shop on Amazon. You know that a lot of people that shop on Amazon, they are quick to return something, maybe even after they use it, just because they want to save money. So it's just part of doing business, unfortunately. Then there's a uh, summary tab. It's actually called unit sold. Sorry. Um, it's your unit sold summary. And uh, you can see how many units were shipped, how many were pending, because again, not every product is shipped out uh, same day. And then your PPC, PPC advertising, your pay per click advertising. So if you're advertising through, well, actually, I was going to say through Campaign Manager, but they've done away with Campaign Manager and rolled it into AMS. Um, but th that used to be separate. So, I mean, for me, for instance, I have my, you know, it's not Campaign Manager anymore, but I've got my Seller Central advertising arm. And then I've got my AMS advertising arm. So I have two separate accounts. The one that is the equivalent of campaign manager that you access through Seller Central automatically rolls up into uh, Jungle Scout sales analytics. If you were advertising through the uh, independent arm of AMS, that will not factor in here, just letting you know. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, that's I'm, I'm sure I'm in a very uh, small minority there. Um, this will just pull in all your data. So it factors into your bottom line and also gets attributed to each sale. Uh, that it generates all right next you can see your stats by product so that's i mean if you're selling multiple SKUs, which i mean if you're just getting started maybe start with just one product but you know my first product for instance i grew that out into a full brand at one point over 10 different SKUs, and you know as long as it's profitable keep growing so if you guys aren't familiar jungle scout on their youtube channel they did a, a million dollar case study where they launched uh jungle sticks and they launched these uh jungle themed jungle snugs uh baby towels i mean that was years ago but the whole purpose was to take the profit generated hopefully um sell i think a million dollars in revenue take all the profits give it to charity so extremely i mean I, I dude jungle scout's awesome i mean when you support their company you're supporting like good people um the guy who is their founder greg mercer great guy so uh and that that mini series is free just like this one so if you want more info you want a second opinion go check out the jungle scout youtube channel uh, they've got lots of good stuff. You can see the backstory behind these products that I've got listed in this uh, this slide. But here you can see the breakdown on a per product basis. Total sales, cost of goods, expenses, net profit, gross margin, ROI, units shipped, uh, promo units shipped, which is probably maybe like lightning deals or coupons, not 100%. And uh, how much, how many of those sales were attributed to PPC? Otherwise, how many were organic, etc. Lots of good stuff. All right, next one. Profit and loss, or PNL for short. So this is just that it basically breaks down, um, you know, if you operated at a profit or if you operated at a loss and where that money was spent. Now again, it's all being kind of rolled up into bigger numbers, but I'll show you how to break these down. Actually, here we go. Cost of goods sold. This is one of those that like may represent one line item here, but then if you come here, you get to see what's actually being uh, rolled up into there. So you've got your unit costs. Now I'm going to show you the UI for this in a couple slides, but your unit cost is just that. How much money are you paying per unit? So if I sell a garlic press and it costs me $5 to the supplier per garlic press and the customers pay me 15, okay, net 10, but there's probably other fees in there, right? Like supplier shipping. You see that there too? Right underneath supplier shipping. So it's not enough that our manufacturer makes it. They also have to ship it to the United States, get it to the FBA warehouse. If you do the math, you can break that down to a per unit cost, um, you know, average cost, and then you can report that here as well. You act, you have to. Um, there's no way for the software to know for you, so you have to do that manually per SKU. And then PPC fees, again, this just gets pulled automatically from your Seller Central account. You integrate it via API. It's a one and done, you know, and then you renew it once a year. So very easy. Um, again, by the way, I use this tool. I'm not just trying to, like, sell you on using it. Like, I personally use it. I couldn't imagine myself using it or not using it, sorry. Um, you know, hopefully I'm like doing a good job explaining how it works. I had to familiarize myself with the new UI for, for sales analytics. Like I said, I'm used to the, um, other older version, but all right. Operating expenses. You can expand that, uh, the seller fees, and you can see that you're paying, you know, FBA storage fees. I have no clue what compensated clawback is that costs them $3 and 99 cents right here above me. Um, no clue subscriptions. I'm assuming that may be, um, I don't know actually because that's under seller fees so the subscription should not be ten dollars 57 cents it should be 39.99 maybe jungle scout gets a discounted rate that would make a lot of sense i'm sure they have a contact at amazon uh fba disposal fee if you have amazon so i mean that's an option when they because when you do fba they handle returns for us you can have them you know we can pay them to 
throw stuff away for us. You know, if we don't want them, you know, because otherwise they're going to charge us storage fees for a unit that they may not be able to resell. So you can just have them automatically throw it away. And long-term storage fees, ouch, those suck. Uh, that's actually behind my head. You see that there? And if if you have inventory that's been stuck too long at um, their warehouses, you will get charged long-term storage fees. That's why it's important to project your inventory levels accurately, which I'm going to show you how I use this software um, to assist me in doing in a second. All right, and then boom, at the end of that, you got your net profit margin. Man, I suck at pointing on the green screen. There you go. Net profit, mar uh, net profit and net margin. So again, this was just over their last seven days, by the way, in their test account. I think it was seven days. Um, so they're looking like just under 15%, which is pretty healthy. Um, I had a really good month this past month. If you checked out my passive income report for June, 2020, I was actually around 25% uh, net margin. A lot of that had to do with just disabling my advertising campaigns because due to the craziness in the world right now, I noticed that a lot of my competition was kind of like dropping off in different niches and, um, you know, I'm still going strong. So. I didn't need to advertise as much. That helped. All right. Other transactions. Another thing on the um, on the sidebar there, which is how you navigate through the different stages or screens of this tool. So here under other transactions, this is just a place for you to enter ways that you are spending money as a part of your FBA business. For instance, ordering samples. Now, they got a sample here for $50. That's not bad. I've paid up to like $150 for a sample. Don't skip ordering samples. I know I already told you that earlier in this mini series, but just saying. Um, Shopify store sales, they credited $100. So you can do deductions and positive. So they're obviously selling through a Shopify branded store. Uh, if you want to pay for photography as well, right there, they paid $45 for that. Um, they had some air shipped to get to Amazon faster, you know, so again, you can in include all of that here. If you do air shipping, by the way, like let's say most, most people are doing sea shipping regularly. So when I input my shipping costs per unit, which I think might even be the next screen, is it? Uh, okay, not yet. Um, inbound shipping, it's not where we enter it, I don't think. Is it? Sorry, again, I'm not used to this UI, but this may be the UI where you enter your inbound shipping per unit, which again, like I said, like you may wire your freight forwarder couple thousand bucks to ship something but like if you actually do the math like how many units were shipped how much did they charge me okay that's the amount per unit put that in here and then they will roll that up into um well into your your numbers but what i'm thinking this is right here that i'm pointing to air shipping because it's about twice as expensive roughly on average than sea shipping they probably put that in here as like a one-off instead of trying to make that the default for that product, because I'm sure like the majority of the time they're doing sea shipping to save money, but air shipping's faster. If you're wondering why people are paying like twice as much, cause it's faster. So maybe they were out of inventory and they didn't want to like lose sales. Cause by the way, if you disappear from the, uh, from the catalog, your competitors occupy the space that you used to occupy. You know what I mean? The competitor who is ranked behind you all of a sudden gets their rank increased. All right. Inventory manager. So as you can see right here, uh, right next to me, oh man, I'm still struggling to point right here. Look at that. Got it. Um, you can see in red, it says order now. Well, hold up. How does it know we need to reorder the jungle sticks? They're like these bamboo, um, what is it called? S'mores sticks, but they're like extra long. Cool story behind that. Again, check out the jungle scout YouTube channel. They're not paying me to say this, by the way, I'm just saying, um, how do they know? Well, you come over here to the product settings and then in these columns right here, you put your product lead time. So if your manufacturer on average takes 30 days to produce your shipment and then on average you need 30 days to do it to ship it via sea and then on average Amazon needs five days to receive the inventory, right? Because the, the truck drops it off, but then an uh, Amazon worker or an associate, I love, I've, I visited an Amazon warehouse. I have a video on my YouTube channel if you're interested. Um, like they have like six locations i think across the country that you can actually schedule a tour so i waited like six months and i went and the one thing that stuck with me is that they call their workers or their employees they call them associates like the the words they use are like very specific and i'm sure the whole thing was mic'd up so our tour guide if they had a slip and they said my co-worker it's like no no associate i'm sure they probably had jeff bezos in the ear um saying use the right word uh, anyways, I don't know why but it bothered me i don't think it bothered me but I, maybe it did i don't know whatever i'm letting it go um back to the to the video here so you input your product lead time so if it's 30 days production 30 days shipping five days intake time 
because the associate has to open the boxes, scan them and place them. That's about 65 days. So it would make sense under the product lead time to put it as 65. Now you can set this per SKU because as your business grows, you may work with different suppliers and need different lead time or different. Well, I mean, ultimately, yeah, different lead time. Maybe it's because of manufacturing. Maybe it's because of shipping. Maybe it's something else. So yeah. And then reorder days of supply. How many days of supply are you reordering? So in Fetcher, we don't have that column because you honestly don't really need it. Like if I'm doing 70 days lead time, I'm ordering probably 70 days worth of inventory. But I guess in case there's another use case for that that I'm missing, um, you can include that here in this column. All right. And then once you, uh, well, you also need to add your product costs. Sorry. So this is your cost of goods per unit. Going back to the garlic press example, if it costs you $5 per garlic press, put that there. Uh, maybe you're bundling them. So maybe a garlic press is $5. Maybe you're selling bundles of two. Well, cost of goods per unit for the SKU that's a two pack, five times two is 10. Supplier shipping cost per unit. Again, that's the example I just gave you of, you know, if we're ordering via C, they charge us $2,000 to ship 2000 garlic presses. Well, that's $1 per garlic press. So put $1 and then miscellaneous costs per unit. So if you are paying an additional one cent per unit to have your supplier put an insert into the box that says, Hey, thank you for your order. You know, don't, don't say anything like leave me a five-star review. Cause that'll get you in trouble. But maybe you have an insert that just says, thank you for your order. Maybe it costs you a penny per um, per unit. Well, put one penny there as miss cost per unit. All right. That's it for, uh, sales analytics by jungle scout, also known as previously known as fetcher. Again, I cannot live without this tool. I've got a link in the description. If you want to support the channel, it's an affiliate link. You don't, I don't think you save any money by using it, but at least if you want to check it out, the tool, like use it for a month, just see how nice it is. Or if there's one month out of the year to use it, it's probably whenever you file your taxes, because it will give you an accurate P and L for your Amazon business. I, I couldn't live without it. All right. And in next time, the next time that we uh, do a video for the mini series, which by the way is almost done, we are nearing the end. I'm at this point, I'm just thinking of like useful tools that I use for my business that I, again, like I use more than what I'm going to show you, but the ones that I can't live without, um, those are the ones I'm going to show you and recommend here. So part 12, I'm going to show you how I automate feedback requests within the Amazon terms of service, because you can't, like I was saying, you can't put an insert into the box that says, hey, give us a five-star review and we'll give you a gift card, things like that. Not that it doesn't happen, but um, you always want to abide by the rules, guys, because this is a long-term business. It's not a short-term money grab. So yeah, part 12, I'll show you how I, how I do that. All right, and that's it. Thank you for watching till the end, guys. If you made it this far, all that I ask is don't leave without hitting the like button. Let the YouTube algorithm know that this video was good, good enough to get you to click the like button at least. And if you're not subscribed, come on now, you've watched... 11 parts of this series uh, you've made it this far you know hit the red button i'm gonna keep dropping good videos for you and um you know let me know how i can make the channel better by the way leave me a comment give me feedback try to read and respond to everything anyways guys thank you i'll see you at the next video passive income school is open enroll now at ryansmethod.com thank you